Hey, this is John Young. Today we're going to look at what happens and how you replace the amp unit on your Electro Voice EKX12. Uh, this particular unit, the amp was fine, but the IEC connection that goes into it here, I'll show you a picture of that, it ended up getting broken. A uh, cord was left into it as it was being taken off the speaker and it snapped. So we had to get that fixed. So we sit, we call, the way it worked is you, that you go to the Electro Voice website and you can go to the customers, the support area, and then there's the repair area. You contact the repair area. They're based out of Omaha, Nebraska, or Lincoln, Nebraska, excuse me, and then they get things set up. Called in and they sent out, uh, sent out the call tag for me. So I boxed up the amp, put it in, sent it back to them. They kind of walked me through what I needed to do on the speaker to get it ready to go. Sent it down, they fixed it. So this, I sent it down and, and such. Again, the call tag was there, so I just put it on the box. Went down, I get an email saying, hey, we've received it, perfect. A little bit, a day or so later, I get an email saying, hey, we, this is, we looked at it, this is what it's gonna cost to repair, click to pay for it, and send it back. We'll talk more about the pay, pay side of it, or the, the, that later, but it's now back. And it took, the turnaround was probably 10 days, so I, I didn't have it for one weekend, but I did for this. So you're gonna literally see me putting it back together, and we're gonna do this on, in this video. So the, We'll open it up, and of course, it's always great to have your Craftsman box cutter. I personally like to use the little hook one. It's kind of used for a lot of carpet guys use it, but I like that one because it very seldom gets in deep enough to cut into what's ever there. And yet it will cut. Now let's get that. Let's get this their shipping label thingy off there. Otherwise, I'll shred it and then it will go, it's actually with multiple pages. So remember, your Craftsman Utility Knife with two blades, a regular blade, and that. It's pretty cool. Okay, we'll open it up and take a look. We have our foam, and they did a much better job of packing it than I did. Now, when you ever, whenever you send something back in to get repaired, what ends up happening is you have to call in and sometimes you've got to ship it back as far as on your own dime. Sometimes it will be a call tag, which you end up paying for anyway in the repair. Let's be, let's be serious. Unless it's a warranty repair, then it's a different story. But they'll give you an, R, an RMA number on it and you usually have to put that on the box. Well, in this particular case, I wanted to make sure that it was right with the product. So I went and wrote it on the actual unit itself. And guess what? This is not the same unit because I literally wrote it on the side here. And they, uh, they replaced the side. That or they cleaned it. I'm guessing they replaced it. So it is a new amplifier unit. And again, if you, want, if you look at that picture that I showed you earlier, what had happened is that this little, this little piece right here, this is the one. Um, this snapped and got pushed in a little bit. So maybe when they were looking at it, they found that it was in need of replacement, which is absolutely fine. So now we're gonna have to put this back in. Get it nicely packed up. We'll set the packing and things to the side. And now the back of the EKX speaker, I expected it to be actually a little more traditional to the old way, where you had the amplifier mounted and then in you get inside and you could see the back of the cones. That's not the way they have it with this particular unit. This one is, once you get in here, there's the back. So you have your two, two wires that have to be connected. And then after that, you are, you are ready, to, ready to roll. But before we can do that, we have to take off the screws. Now I put the screws back in and I'm going to use my little Craftsman 3 millimeter metric, three, my little Allen wrench here, and take those back out. I put them back in just to make it so I wouldn't lose them. Because as you well know, when you're doing a project and it starts one week and then it ends two weeks later, things like screws and nuts and washers can kind of sometimes get knocked off the table when you have a cat or children or 
or a clumsy self. Yeah, so I'm gonna take these all back out because I had just put them back in. And these are basically, I'm gonna show you one of these, basically a, a wood screw with an Allen wrench head. So they're going into the wood, the composite of the box. Now, some of you are saying with all the power tools you have at your disposal and you're using an Allen wrench. Yeah, I could go grab a, a cordless driver of some sort, but I don't know if I wanna have, I'd rather have that tactile feel of doing it by hand to make sure that I'm not over tightening. Okay, so now we'll attach the LED and that will go in this upper corner. As you look at it, it's in this corner, so it's up here. So we'll bring that wire around, making sure to get it lined up. There's a little, a little um, bar that goes in here on the gap and it snaps in all the way. Then on the other, there's a little bit of a, a ridge here. I'm gonna show you that. You can see there's a little lip and that lip goes to the top. There's a little catch that you'd have to release to pull it out. So we'll line that up and slide those in. Goes in all the way and snaps in. Now we can carefully make sure all the made sure all the gaskets were lined up where they should be. And as you can possibly see, maybe not, the gaskets are over all the holes. So we have to first kind of push. I shouldn't say, you don't want to push through it because then you'll pull the gasketing off on the other side. You just put the tip of the, the sharp tip of the screw in there and let it kind of turn and cut its way through. We'll get a couple of them on here. Now you'll notice I'm not tightening these up all the way, although I think I probably could now. But it, when you're doing things like this, you want to start them and get a few of them started to make sure that it's lined up properly, but I think we're pretty good to go. So I could be taking all, all the way down, but out of, out of habit, I'm just going to get them all in and started before going around in and tightening them up. And then we'll tighten our last one. And then, of course, you'll tighten it finger tight. You don't want to crank on it too much and add tools to it because you could end up kind of stripping out the wood, the composite. So that would be a bad, a bad thing. Now I'm going to go grab a cord and we're going to give this a test and see if our repairs worked. All right, we're going to slide this over a little bit. All right, so we've got get our, our speaker all put back together. We have our inputs as we do with the, the KX series. We're going to actually use the RCA inputs just to do this little test. I'm gonna turn that on and we'll turn the speaker on, make sure we have power. And there's our happy little light up unit and zero dB with that. And it's music tripod sub is off. Perfect on that. We're gonna have the volume down there. Okay, so we're just coming from the cell phone. And we are getting we are getting full range signal. I can hear the bass and everything. So yay, we are functioning. So that's it. If you have to take the amp off on one of your Electro Voice speakers, you literally just reverse the process. You take the little screws out, unplug the connections, and get it ready to send in. Now, we're gonna talk the price. It was a little higher than I expected, truthfully. Um, it, it, this was out of warranty and it was a, a snap here. So it was my, 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 um, on my dime. The shipping there, shipping back in the full uh, repair or replacement in this particular case, I'm pretty sure it was replacement, was, uh, was $280. It was somewhere in that ballpark. So it was a little more expensive. And for some of you, you're gonna be like, hey, I could just buy a brand new speaker. You could if you were gonna go down the line. But the idea that they went through this thing, they fixed it, and they went and they possibly replaced the thing from all because I wrote on that with a sharpie, and we didn't see any signs of sharpie being being dealt with. So I'm guessing that this is a new module that they gave me and just put the old st the stickers on because I'm looking at the sticker seems to be a little yeah they don't seem to be as perfect as they possibly were you know from factory the first time so. I'm guessing that they probably did replace the whole amp unit. And truthfully, for 
that kind of money and replacing the amp so it's basically a new speaker, I don't know if I'm too upset about that whatsoever. So happy to have it back, happy to be able to have it back within two weeks. So really I only lost uh, one weekend without it, which I had other, other speakers and other things going on, so it wasn't a big deal. But if that situation happens to you, have confidence that they'll be able to take care of you. Go to the website, get the number, give them a call during business hours, and the folks out of Lincoln, Nebraska will take good care of you. This is John Young. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.